Hi everyone, I'm Mackenzie. I'm with the Beaverton City Library, uh, normally at Murray Shoals, but today I'm at home and I'm going to give you a STEM activity that you can probably do um, with supplies that you have at home. So today's challenge is called climbing water and it says move water from one cup to another cup without touching or pouring your water. So just a reminder, STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. And I have a few extensions um, to sort of expand this activity. But first you'll want to get your supplies. So it's not a ton of supplies. We have paper towels and food coloring. Got my food coloring right here. And you'll have water. And then um, I grabbed two different kinds of cups. So a plastic cup and a glass. So um, you'll see why a little bit later. All right, so this might be a great time to go grab your supplies. And if you're back, I have a hint for you. Your hint says, think about what a paper towel does to water. How can you place the paper towel to help the water move? So think about when you maybe um, wipe up a spill um, with paper towels. Does the paper towel just sit on top of the spill, like the spilled water, or does it soak it up? And what, if it soaks it up, does the liquid just stay in a contained spot on the paper towel or does it sort of spread out? A few things to think about. You might ask, what is going on in the science behind this? I want to know more. This is something I've always wanted to know about. So here we go. The paper towels show capillary action, which is when water moves through narrow spaces against gravity. Paper towels are made of cellulose fibers. They have tiny spaces between them, and then the water molecules want to stay together, so they go up through the spaces like they're straws. Plants also use capillary action to draw water up through their stems up to their leaves. Place a stalk of celery or a carnation in colored water and see what happens. You can also try different flowers, because um, you might not have maybe carnations in your backyard, um, but if you have other white flowers, it's something you can definitely experiment with separately. All right, so this is a great time to make a hypothesis, maybe make a few sketches of what you might think will work, um, and try different things out. All right, now the extension activities. First for science, um, how do trees get water to the leaves at the very, very top? And how, the, how does that overcome gravity? So that might mean you'll have to do a little bit of brainstorming and a little bit of research maybe online. For technology, try different cups. Remember those two different cups I had? Doo, doo, doo. Two different cups and different brands of paper towels. I would recommend um, sort of trying them out separately so then you know this is the cup that had an effect or the paper towel that had an effect. Remember, you want to have a control, right? So you only want to be testing one thing at a time. How do they affect the way the water moves? For engineering, design a toy or a game that uses capillary action. Hmm. For art, how can you use more cups and food coloring to make a rainbow? And what colors do you mix to make other colors? So here, my food coloring is just pink, blue, green, and purple. But your food coloring that you might have at home might be in different colors. So like, I don't have yellow here. I don't have orange. And not having yellow is a problem because you got three primary colors, right? Red, yellow, and blue. And you use those to mix and make more colors. And last for math. How high can water climb up a paper towel before the gravity stops it? And how quickly does the water move? So this might be a great time to get out a ruler 
or a measuring tape. Um, get out a timer. Uh, your parents might have a timer on their phone. Um, a few different ways that you can extend this activity. So I hope that you learn something from it and that it's a lot of fun. And we will see you next time. Bye, everyone.